for another Tool Time Tuesday. This is Melissa Muir. Today I'm going to talk about a new custom tool that I had made for me. This is called a swage block. Swage blocks can be made out of many types of material including wood, delrin, uh, acrylic, nylon, and metal. Uh, this block happens to be made out of a beautiful black walnut that we got in Oregon. Uh, my father-in-law took it back to Idaho and made this for me based off of some of my specifications. The purpose for this block is to create grooved forms um, called spiculums in the case of the projects that I'm working on. And what I have used this for, uh, some of you guys may recall that I wrote an article a couple of years ago for Art Jewelry Magazine called Flat From Flat to Flower. And what we've done is we take just a very flat piece of metal and using nothing more than a swage block and a couple of hammers, you are able to take this flat piece of metal and convert it into a lovely lily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just demonstrate very quickly how I use my swage block to create this form. Now I've also written a tutorial that's pretty extensive on how to use the swage block to create a couple of different projects. Uh, one of them is a pair of cone earrings. Okay, so again, you start with a flat piece of, of metal and using, again, nothing more than the swage block and some hammers, you are able to create a beautiful round form called a spiculum, or in this case, you know, this form happens to be a cone. So, um, there's a couple good things on there, and that can also be found on my website at www.kcjewelbox.com, as well as these blocks. Uh, I have, we made like 65 of them, and I think I have like 15 of them left. So they've been pretty popular. We should be doing another run here in another couple of months. So if you don't happen to get yours on this particular round, like I said, in a couple of months, we should have a couple more. So first thing I want to do is make certain that my metal is annealed. So this has been annealed. I've kind of sanded it down to remove some of the fire scale, some of the tarnish that was on it, and I'm now ready to go through and form this. What I like to do is start with one of my larger curves or the larger grooves. So you can see that we've got, again, you know, multiple different grooves in here. Um, I always start with the larger one. I also like to start with my fingers and do as much as I possibly can to form the shape with my fingers. So I'm just coming in here and pressing this down with my thumb into the groove block. Now there's not a whole lot happening to the rest of this, like the stem of this flower. There's just not enough of a curve into this one. So what I would do here is flip my block over and start with the next larger groove. And again, I'm going to do as much as I possibly can with my fingers and just kind of work my form through. Okay. And once I get to the point where it's no longer moving with just my fingers, I then move into a hammer. There's a number of hammers that you can use for this project. One of the most simple and the very first one that I started with was a basic riveting hammer. I have altered my end of my hammer a little bit just so that it's a little bit more rounded. I want to have a nice round curved surface here on this cross beam so that I don't mar my metal quite as much and I don't leave nice little dings like hammers can. What I want to do is I'm going to start by hammering along the edges and what that does is it creates a nice little curve. Okay, You want to be able to create that curve all the way through your metal and then start to curve into the middle. If you just started hammering into the middle of your piece, your form is not going to come together nicely as a round, but it will actually kind of come together and you'll have straight edges that you're trying to bring around and it's very difficult at that point to get a nice smooth round surface. So I'm just going to go all the way through one course of my metal 
and then I'm going to go to the opposite end and also do that and then I'll come back and go through the middle as well. When I get down to the spoon or the, the part that's going to become our lily, I will hold on to the tip of this and I'll probably only come about halfway into the flower. So I'll get to that point and we'll pick it up. Okay, so here I have finished my first course of going through this and you can kind of see that we've got more of a curved uh, smooth edge in here. There are a lot of hammer marks and that's okay. Not a big deal. Okay, and so we've got a curve that's going on here which is okay for a little while but it does need to be addressed. So at this point, because I'm actually pretty stiff on this metal here, I'm not going to have as much easy movement and that's going to give me a less even surface. So I'll take the time here to go ahead and um, anneal this, maybe do some pickle and then clean it up as well. And then we can go through the next couple rounds of switching from the larger to the smaller and smaller grooves until we're ready to get this closed. Okay, so I've done just a really quick cleanup on this, so we're ready to move into the next group. So again, I'm going to do the same type of thing where I work from the outside and into the inside of this. Um, again, I'm just going to come in, and then I flip it over and do the same thing. Okay, and then I'm going to concentrate again here on the lily. Do the other side. Now I don't want to come too far into the face of this lily because if I do then I'll have hammer marks that actually show up inside of that and that's not what I want. Once I get my flower completely formed, I want to be able to have a nice smooth surface in there. So I only come in about just maybe kind of halfway into the spoon of that lily. And from here what I'm going to do is just go into the next smaller grooves. And just kind of continue to go in through this. And I want to, again, you can see here that we've developed this curve again. And that's okay. Once I anneal it again, I'll just straighten that back out as well. So I'm going to, again, work on the spoon of the lily. And then once I've got that done, I will flip my block over where I have some more smaller grooves. And again, just kind of work my way through until we've got a nice U shape and I'm not able to get my hammer into my form any longer. Okay, I've gotten this now to the point where I really can't get my hammer into this anymore to curve it. We have a really nice groove going on inside of there. I'm actually going to just kind of flatten this out just a little bit, make it a little easier to work with. What I need to do now is to close this speculum and this is done with the flat face of a hammer. So you can use a planishing hammer, but again I'm just going with my riveting hammer here. What I'm going to do, and this takes a little bit of practice, so it's easy for me to show you and to say what to do, but you're just going to have to do it a few times in order to really get good at this. I am just going to knock the very edge of this, so I've got it laid on its side, and I'm just going to bring gently the edges together. Okay, and here at the very tip, I've actually thinned out my metal, so it's going to move very easily. Okay, so you can kind of see here that I'm just kind of bringing things together. And my goal is to bring it together into a teardrop. Okay, so I don't want to try to bring this all the way around. But by tapping here on the edges like I am, it's going to bring everything kind of together, kind of like this. Alright, and again, I'm, I'm looking for that teardrop. And once I get this teardrop, I then come in and flatten that seam and I'm ending up with a nice cone shape or a nice round shape. So I just kind of go back and forth between both sides. Um, not hitting too hard but I'm not hitting too soft either because I actually want to make sure that the metal does move. Uh, I'm not too concerned here with the flower at this point. I'm working more just on the stem of this. 
And again, I'm just going to switch this back over. And you'll notice that I've switched onto the flat side of my swage block for this part. So I can do pretty much the entire thing just with the swage block. Okay. So this has a tendency to want to twist just while I still have it somewhat open. Use my fingers, twist it back open so that the seam remains on top. Okay. And again, I'm just going to continue to proceed in that same manner. And I'm just bringing that edge around. And by doing this on this edge here, again, like I said, it's going into head and just bring everything nice and smooth together, just like that. Okay. So you can kind of see things are coming together a little bit more now as we continue to proceed through this. So I'm going to keep doing this until I get everything brought together to that teardrop shape. Okay, at this point I've gotten everything pretty close together. Um, my seam is now more in a teardrop shape and what I'm going to do is take my hammer and hit right on that seam and what will happen is it's going to bring it all together and it's going to round out that shape as well as flattening out that seam. So again, I'm going to bring this onto my swage block. You can again do this with just the flat face of your riveting hammer as well. Okay, and I'm just going to hit directly onto the seam itself. taking pretty decent care here at the tip so that I don't uh, warp that out of shape or overlap it. Okay, and just taking a few checks on this. Okay. Now I'm left with some different hammer marks on here. You can kind of see those. Uh, let's see if I can get this into focus. It wants to keep focusing on my other items. But you can kind of see that there are some tool marks in here. And I can take care of that a little bit with a planishing hammer. And just going back over that surface as well with the planishing hammer. Once I'm happy with how the seam looks, then I will just take some files or a sandpaper, clean up my seam, solder it, and then I'm ready to go. But at that point, there's my lily. And it's all done, like I said, just using a simple riveting hammer that I've altered the head on just to kind of make this end a little bit more smooth, a little more curved, so it's not quite so sharp or pointed on the edges. And my swage block. And again, this swage block is available on my website, www.kcjewelbox.com. There's also a tutorial available, and in the tutorial shows how to make two different items. One is the cone earrings that I showed you, and the second is actually a lily similar to this, only on a much smaller scale, so that it would be better as like a simple pendant, or again, you could even make those as earrings. Templates are included in the tutorial as well.